Hi everyone, uh, this is Mr. G trying to do a uh, PowerPoint lecture uh, through something called Screencast. So we'll see how this works. Um, I hope that you all are doing well and are all healthy and safe. Um, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to be trying some new things with basically how our assignments have been working. So instead of giving you guys big assignments to work on, I'm going to try and shift to giving you PowerPoint lectures that'll be like, you know, 10 minutes tops, hopefully. We'll see how this goes. And then have you fill out graphic organizers with questions on it for points um, that will hopefully be easier than doing big web quests or anything like that. So we'll see how this goes. Um, you know, we'll try it out. And uh, this is going to be on the U.S., Puerto Rico, and Cuban relationships in Latin America. So if you want to open up the U.S., Puerto Rico, Cuba graphic organizer, that'll be how you can follow along. And I'll have a submission folder for each of these things in Google Classroom. Uh, by the way, if you're having trouble with Google Classroom, like you can't submit things, you can't uh, see things, or I don't know, it's just being glitchy, uh, make sure to email me just so that I can try and help you figure things out. So let's get started. So why this matters, uh, what action did the US take to achieve its goals in Latin America? That's our big question for today. But why it matters is the US has a really long, bloody and complicated history in Latin America during the 20th century. Uh, meaning we will work with some countries, uh, overthrow the governments of others, depending on their political beliefs, depending on their uh, economic systems, or just depending on our uh, what our country needs in terms of political movements or uh, economics. So Cuba is going to get involved with the Cold War, and that almost gets us into World War III, which is, I would say, a pretty big deal, considering Cuba is going to uh, eventually embrace the Soviet bloc instead of the United States when Castro comes to power. Um, that's going to be a little past what we're going to talk about, but some of the groundwork for that's going to get laid here. Uh, oh, and Teddy Roosevelt's back. Thank God. I was getting tired of not having him around. Oh, uh, there he is. I missed him. Okay. Moving on. Governing Puerto Rico. So, uh, Puerto Rico, directly to the right of Cuba, in your, I guess, world map that's in your head, so the U.S. is going to gain control of Puerto Rico after the Spanish-American War, which we win. And in 1900, Congress passed something called the Four Acre Act. And what that really means is it establishes a civil government in Puerto Rico that's basically run by the United States. So the U.S. president appoints the governor of Puerto Rico and also appoints part of the legislature. So what that means in effect is that, I mean, it would be like the U.S. president deciding that he wants to have 15 members of Congress be, uh, you know, believe the same things he does, and he can put them in power in the legislature. So it sounds a little, a little weird when you say it out loud. So if you're a Cuban veteran of the uh, Spanish-American War, your thoughts might not be very good <laughs> about this, because, you know, you just fought for your supposed independence against uh, Spain with the Americans, and now the United States uh, is not very is is taking a, a nation right next to you and they're essentially saying you're a puppet government now we are going to appoint your governor and we're going to appoint part of your legislature so if you're a cuban veteran you might not be looking over at puerto rico and you might not like what you see and puerto rico does not have full rights as american citizens they are american citizens uh but they do not have the same representation or rights that we do in the United States, although they are still taxed by the U.S. government, which does lead to the question of taxation without representation, which is the basis of the U.S. project after, you know, throwing off the British. So that on the right is the Cuban Capitol building, I believe. I might be wrong about that, but I am 90% sure that's a Cuban Capitol building. And one thing you can notice about it is it looks a lot like uh, the u.s capitol building it has a giant dome lots of columns like it's a ton of columns too many columns one might say um and it's built in the greco-roman style which the u.s adopted um yeah i just think it's a cool building and yes i already answered that question i'm still getting used to the powerpoint thing bear with me so 
the Platt Amendment. It doesn't sound very exciting, but it's how we basically get Guantanamo Bay, uh, which has been in the news a lot, maybe not recently, but um, at the height of the Iraq War and the Afghanistan uh, conflict war, uh, this was a hot topic because this is where we basically put all of the people we captured in Afghanistan or Iraq, like on the field of battle, uh, they were considered prisoners of war. Um, they are not given the same trial and uh, judicial process, which means it's kind of a really controversial issue, like what to do about Guantanamo Bay, which is a naval base in Cuba. Anyway, that's not the point of the lecture. That's a whole other semester we could talk about that. But for now, what you need to know is that the U.S. Army leaves Cuba in 1902, sort of. Um, what happens is, oh, and by the way, what else happened in 1902? Specifically in the Philippines. Well, I'll give it to you. It, the, the Filipino insurrectionists surrendered to the United States in the same year that the U.S. Army leaves Cuba. Um, it's kind of like a situation where you're about to leave and you say, oh, Cuba, one more thing, just one more thing, uh, the Platt Amendment. We'd like to pass that. And what that's going to do is it's going to restrict the rights of Cubans and it's going to say, okay, Cuba, you can't sign any treaties with anybody outside of the U.S. without our approval. So you can sign treaties with us, but if you want to sign treaties with, I don't know, Denmark, you have to get our approval. And also, by the way, if we decide that your country is going in a, in a direction that we don't like, or you know, you're not supporting U.S. businesses in a fashion that we deem necessary, we can actually intervene um, in Cuba, like with military we're talking like, you know, Marines coming on the beach sort of situation. So uh, not intervene in a nice way. And so this is, I just have this as an example. It kind of sounds stupid now when I say it out loud, but I don't care. It, it's basically the equivalent of like the U.S. is telling Cuba, yes, you can go hang out with your friends, but where will you be? Who will you be with? What will you be doing? When will you get home? Did you remember what to do when the last time I asked you to, or did you remember what to do when I asked you the last time to do? I don't know what I said there. And then, no, you can't hang out with your friends. So basically, you're saying, yes, Cuba, you have some rights. But by the way, what are you doing? Where are you going to be with? And if you want to do anything with anybody else, you have we have to sign off on it. Sorry if that was a little incoherent. Uh, I only had one cup of coffee, so deal with it. And then there is Teddy Roosevelt with, uh, this is a very famous political cartoon. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt with his wonderful big stick. He's got that massive weapon. Um, and he's basically, in this political cartoon, dragging the, uh, the U.S. fleet around uh, the Caribbean Sea. And all the ships have cool things on them, like Sheriff and Debt Collector and the Receiver. And then all the countries around the edges, so Cuba, Mexico, Panama, Venezuela, Santo Domingo. Uh, I can never pronounce that correctly. Um, I'm not even going to try to do it. Uh, okay, so yeah, what you see here, he's got the big stick, and he's going to collect the debt from these countries, and, you know, if Cuba decides not to pay up, they get the, you know, the big stick. So there's another cool big stick diplomacy cartoons. I really like that one, too. It shows uh, everything in general being destroyed. Uh, oil trusts, railroad trusts. So basically, they're using... Roosevelt's big stick diplomacy in Latin America and comparing it to his trust busting, uh, which is pretty clever. This is one of the most famous quotes from an American president ever. And it's, speak softly and carry a big stick. You will go far. Teddy Roosevelt. Now, what that really means is that if you have a huge military, you can ask people politely for things. But those people also should know that you have a massive military and that you can bomb the living daylights out of them. That's essentially what this means is that if the big stick is the military and speaking softly would be like asking nicely. So big stick diplomacy, um, this is the type of diplomacy that TR likes, Teddy Roosevelt. And it's kind of new um, and it really depends on the threat of a strong US military. It's basically, um, if you've heard of carrot and the stick, basically, you offer the carrot to the animal, and if the animal doesn't like the carrot, you use the stick to, like, you know, hit it on the back to get it to move to wherever you want. Uh, well, they're trying to do that with nations. They're trying to say, okay, well, we'll offer you something, but if you say no, or if you have a counteroffer we don't like, we can send in the Marines. And then Roosevelt, as much as I like him, 
there's no such thing as a perfect person, no such thing as a perfect president. So he had some very, uh, let's say, backwards beliefs about people that weren't American or uh, Americanized. He said that the U.S. had to basically uplift or civilize weaker nations. And what that really means is, uh, in practice, is trying to get people who aren't like us to be like us which normally ends very badly and people normally end up very unhappy or sick or, you know, we end up having a military intervention over it. So, um, yeah, like I said, easier said than done. The difficulty here is if you go to a place and say, oh, we want to civilize you. Well, they might say, we're already civilized. We don't need any more civilization. No, thank you. So that presents a problem. Oh, here's another really good one. I like this one a lot. Um, because it has, I, I don't know why it has that split down the middle. I think somebody took this from a book, but oh well. Anyway, what it shows here is Teddy Roosevelt, and the art style is really cool in this one, if not very racist on aspect, on many aspects. Yeah, it's very racist. Okay, um, it has Teddy Roosevelt with his giant nightstick, so he's being shown as the policeman here. There's Washington, D.C. in the background, and then you've got all these different countries coming to him. This is tell your troubles to the policeman. Arbitration. So he's going to basically fix your problems, and he's got a giant stick. So what you see here is you've got people from Brazil, some with guns, turning away. Look, the Filipinos turning away, and he has a rifle. Oh, boy. Central America. And then you've got over here, Europe and Asia. So you've got Russia. I believe that's supposed to be England with a fishing boat that's cracked. Japan, Germany, and then you've got some Middle Eastern and African nations here. A lot of these are being portrayed very, you know, very racistly, but this is the art style back then, and uh, yeah, I mean, I can't change it now, but moving on. So this is where I'm going to put basically uh, one day after this, you guys will have an activity for uh, big stick diplomacy. That's my goal. And then the next day, you'll have something on U.S. intervention in Cuba. So I will put these up on Google Classroom um, with instructions. And then this will essentially be your assignments to go off of the lecture. So we'll see how this works. Um, this will be about, you know, we'll do one day for the graphic organizer and the PowerPoint, uh, one day for the big stick example, and then another day for U.S. intervention in Cuba. So that's going to be how we're going to approach this. Um, let me know if you have any questions, if this worked, if it didn't, if I talked too fast, which I probably did. Um, but like I said, it's a video, so just go back and restart it um, if you missed anything. Anyway, I hope you guys are going to continue to be safe, and uh, let me know um, if you have any questions about anything. So have a good rest of your day. I'm going to go play with my puppy.